Alexa. Good evening to all the enthusiastic and exuberant educators present here. I welcome all to the 130th web training series of CBSC Bharat Sahodia. Today we have Ms. Jaya Nambiar, who is a passionate educator by choice and not by chance, rather by design, not by default. She is a firm believer of Kaizen, which talks about continuous improvement. At her workplace, she is international baccalaureate um, a curriculum coordinator and a lead Harvest International School um, at Bangalore. She is also a Global Goal Project School Coordinator, Rise for SDG Coordinator, UNESCO Water Project Coordinator, um, Kindness Carnival um, uh, pro uh, Program Coordinator, Resource Person for Learnathon Web Training Series for Bangalore. I'm sorry, uh, Bangalore, Sahodaya, uh, Hub Schools, and so on. She believes an educator is someone who puts principle into practice to create a culture of thinking in classroom and develop, develop self-efficacy in learners. So before I completely uh, hand over the session to uh, Ms. Jaya, let me do a Digital curtain raiser, uh, kindly please wait. Uh, here we go. So I welcome you, ma'am, uh, to take over this grand session. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you, Mr. Arun Mohan, for the lovely introduction. Good evening and hearty welcome to one and all present here. Three things that come to my mind right now. What a wonderful crowd. What a beautiful day. And what a coincidence. April 17, 2022. And we are here to listen to the experts on 17 SDGs on this Easter Sunday. Happy Easter greetings to one and all. At the outset, I would like to extend my warm gratitude note to Dr. Abdul Salam and CBSC Baris Sahodaya Complex for giving me this magnificent opportunity. Participants, if you have joined this session, it makes me believe that you are an action taker. Trust me, only 2% of people in this world, they are action takers, and you are one of them. Your presence here is a proof that you believe in self-improvement as part of your profession, as well as personal growth is concerned. It is indeed a pleasure to have each one of you as an integral part of this webinar as we embark together on such a relevant and significant burning session on implementation of 17 SDGs in our school curriculum and understanding the essence of global goals. This is 130th episode web training series by Bharat Sahodia. And this episode particularly is in collaboration with ARC EdTech. To start, I would like to give a brief overview how this session is going to look like. We will have a presentation by Mr. Anit Gupta, co-founder, Arc EdTech, 
for almost 30 minutes. Then there will be brainstorming discussion by Dr. Kalyani Rao, Executive Advisor, Arcade Tech. We would have reflection segment by Ms. Abhilasha Singh for her reflection on SDGs and connectivity with students in her school. Then we would have question answer segment towards the end. Without further ado, let me take, take you through some of the housekeeping essential. Let's all be active listeners first. We request everyone to be on mute for the smooth functioning of today's event. Kindly refrain from using chat box while the expert session is on, unless and until it is very important to do that. There will be a question answer session towards the end as I already informed earlier. You may raise your hand and we will unmute you. Alternatively, you can use chat box option to type your questions. This is a recorded event. And if your bandwidth permits, do make your presence visible on the screen. Also, you can use your social media handles like Twitter or LinkedIn at any point of time during this session to voice your opinions. Do tag your own respective school, yourself, and team Bharat Sahodia. Be with me in this journey for next one and a half hours. Now let me take you through introducing our program coordinator, Dr. Abdul Salam. As you all know very well, words and phrases are not enough to describe how he has contributed to building nation builders. Dr. Abdul Salam, the secretary, general secretary of CBC Bharat Sohodia Complex, and he's the principal of prestigious school, the Oxford School, Shuandra. He is a resource person at CBSC and deputy training coordinator of Trivandrum region. Sir is a founder of BTAG, that's Bharat Transformers Academic Group, a consortium of educators and the teaching fraternity across the globe, connecting them together to empower the nation. Sir, I would like, like you to take over and deliver the welcome address to grace the occasion. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Ms. Jaya Nambia and uh, Mr. Aaron Mohan for the virtual as well as you know, verbal introduction about UN SDGs. Hearty welcome and good evening to all the participants who have joined on board with us today. Though being Sunday, many have tried to join. We have received more than 7, 700 registrations. Many, you know, maybe finding difficult being Sunday to join, but definitely they can listen to us later when this video is uploaded. And uh, at the outset, let me congratulate uh, all the educators for their enthusiasm and for their efforts in enlightening uh, the student community with the need to integrate and engage themselves in UN SDGs and achieve the goals by 2030. So thank you so much uh, for your efforts. And in fact, we are very glad to uh, be connected with uh, today with uh, Ms. Kalyani, Ms. Afilashra Singh, and uh, we have, you know, we are joining hands with one more expert, Mr. Anit Gupta, who is, uh, you know, who's, who is very much here to give you a brief presentation on uh, today's topic. And uh, in fact, everybody knows that even NEP, National Education Policy, emphasizes and gives new focus on the integration of SDGs in the school curriculum. And many of us, many of the schools have been trying to give uh, maximum engagement to their students, uh, to be part of the SDGs, uh, to come up with uh, projects, to engage themselves in community services, all their efforts uh, to benefit for the earth to remain a better place for everybody 
to live on. And uh, this particular session, though we have conducted many sessions before with uh, one with uh, Miss Jennifer Williams and Miss Afilasha Singh also was there. Afilasha, ma'am, are you there? Yes, Kalyani, ma'am, and uh, all we have been learning a lot from uh, experts like you know Jennifer Williams and all. But here and there, we need you know a kind of uh, hand holding a kind of support, how to integrate this SDG. Because, you know, if you make a, what do you call a project, the, with that uh, completion of the project, that, uh, you know, activity comes to an end. But it is uh, uh, everyone's responsibility to see that this SDG is integrated in the daily lives, in the, through the curriculum, through the school curriculum. That is what we have been, you know, trying to, uh, uh, do and help the learning community through the wonderful teaching community present here. And we have conducted several programs, even competitions, in which we have seen the enthusiasm, the active participation of uh, lots of students. And I'm very thankful to Kalyani ma'am and uh, Apilasha Singh ma'am for being, you know, uh, the backbone of those programs uh, helping us. And here we have, you know, uh, come together along with Mr. Anit Gupta uh, to see how more, how much more we can be of help to you. And uh, definitely this session will give you much more enlightenment in terms of UN SDGs. And uh, we have so, so many programs and uh, there is a very reason uh, Mr. Anit Gupta is here. He'll be uh, briefing you the programs which all are going to benefit uh, this very uh, existence of ours. So uh, let's listen to uh, Mr. Anit Gupta, Ms. Kalyani ma'am and uh, Abhilasha ma'am who has already started you know, integrating the SDGs in the school curriculum. So thank you so much. Uh, Let's listen to them and all the information will be shared to you, uh, to your mails after the session. So thank you so much, Jaya ma'am, uh, over to you, thank you. Thank you, Salam sir. Ladies and gentlemen, help me welcome Mr. Anit Gupta, our expert for the day, first expert for the day. Mr. Anit Gupta has over two decades of international business experience in over six countries with brand names like Coca-Cola, FedEx, SL Group, and HCL Technologies, during which he has driven long-term business growth for the companies and their clients. He's a co-founder of Arc EdTech, which is a startup that offers teaching learning solutions towards making education meaningful and transformative. Core value of ARC lies in creating a culture of sustainability amongst children and showcase the best practices from schools across the globe. Global Sustainability Award is one such venture by ARC EdTech. I take this opportunity to announce that Oxford School Chuandram and my school, Harvest International School Bangalore, have bagged SDG Superhero State Awards for 2021, along with many other schools across India and abroad. So let's put our hands together to welcome Mr. Anit Gupta. Over to you, sir. Screen is all yours. Thank you, Jaya ma'am, Arun sir, Abdul sir, uh, for such a good platform uh, and such a brilliant audience. Uh, I really uh, welcome all the teachers, educators on this platform, on this forum. And uh, let me start by um, sharing just a few slides and, a, and it's more of a story. So let's start with that and then we will talk more.
I think all of us relate to all the problems I mentioned in some of these slides. We have faced air pollution. We have faced uh, war and conflict very recently now. We have faced COVID. And I think these are not the biggest threats to us as human race. The greatest threat to our planet is the belief that someone else will save it. And I think this is where people like you, all educators, need to start taking things in our own hands. We need to believe that we can bring a change. We need to believe that I am enough to take care of things. And I think that belief will really help us move forward. So welcome to all of you. I think um, we are all passionate about SDGs. We have talked about SDGs. Avilasha ma'am, Kalyani ji, they are all experts in this area. Jennifer Williams ma'am. And I think you all heard uh, why SDGs are important. The biggest problem today our education system is facing is look at any of the ads by Baiju's, Vedantu, by any of those people. They are putting more stress on students. All we talk about is how can you get better in English? How can you get better in maths, science? We are not at all preparing them for the future. We are not making them life ready. And most importantly, we are not making them better human beings. We at ARC believe that the main focus of our education has to be making our future generations better human beings and globally responsible citizens. And I think this is the big problem we want to address today. Uh, why SDGs? So after a lot of research, we figured out that now the problem is that we want to make our kids better human beings, but there is not a lot of content available. We are either doing it through moral science, through value education, but that is a very direct method of telling children to become kind, empathetic, compassionate, responsible, whatever we want to tell. That is a very direct method. And that is not working out nicely. SDGs cover all the problems which our planet is facing today. You name a problem and it's there covered under SDGs. So if we talk to our children about SDGs, they understand the problems and they automatically become kind, empathetic and better human beings. But SDGs can do a lot of things for you. They can make our kids bet problem solvers of tomorrow. They can, SDGs can make them kind and empathetic. SDGs inculcate the 21st century critical thinking skills in students. So we, I think we all of us understand and believe that SDGs are a very good tool, right? Are, are you all with me? Okay, great. SDGs, once we understand that SDGs can really make an impact, the second gap which we find is that schools want to implement SDGs. Schools have been trying to implement SDGs, but are they trying, are they implementing SDGs in the best possible way? No, because the problem is that schools have given that task to the teachers and teachers are already overburdened. Since last two years, I think the biggest warriors we have seen are the teachers, not the healthcare workers, maybe. Because teachers, what teachers have seen and faced is tremendous. They have taken the burden on their shoulders for still maintaining to teach our kids. So once one such gap is that schools want to implement, but there is no such material available in the market. Second is that anything we do when, when the material is curated, it is in the UN language. So I have seen that the students, the schools which were trying to implement, they were telling the students about zero hunger, no poverty in a very UN language, that this is what no poverty means. This is how you, 
people are working. This is uh, the international poverty line. So we are, yes, we are giving information, but we are not igniting their thought process in that way. The third, big, the third biggest problem is that all of that is very unstructured. We do it in one class, in one grade, and we think that we have done our duty. It has to be consistent. It has to be like maths and English. Every year you have to talk about SDGs. It cannot be that you teach in one class, one grade, and your job is done. It won't happen that way. So these are some of the big gaps which, are, which exist. And at ARC, we have tried to close those gaps through our books, which are for grades nursery till grade eight, digital solutions. And I think if you go deeply into the books, you will realize that we are not just in grade one or grade nursery or KG. We are not talking about when we say zero hunger, we are not saying that zero hunger means that we need to remove hunger from the world. We are not even doing that. We are just, in grade one, we are just igniting that thought process about what is food? What do you like to eat? In grade two, we talk about what is healthy food and what is unhealthy food? When we start growing, eventually we tell them that there is enough food in the, on the planet. How tough it is to uh, prepare food, uh, produce food. And there is enough food on the planet, but it is not available to everyone. And eventually when they come to grade eight, they start becoming the problem solvers. They start thinking of ways and innovative means to solve those problems. So we are in no rush. We should not be in no, we should not be in any rush to tell students right in grade one and grade two about all of these problems. We need to build that in a structured, in a systematic manner. And that's what we have tried to do through our books. Uh, our program is obviously the uh, student handbooks for nursery to grade eight, but that is not where our duty ends. If we give the handbooks to the students, it is of no use until and unless the, the teachers are trained. Teachers undergo the workshops in terms of how to implement these books in the best possible way. So we do workshops with the teachers and we also provide them detailed uh, teaching and learning material with lesson plans, video resources, extra resources, anything you name and it's there in those, um, in those uh, TLMs, the teaching and learning material. So our content is child friendly. It works at a metacognitive level of the students. It is structured, graded, activity based, and it doesn't put burden on teachers. But my aim is not to uh, tell you just that you have to implement these books. Even if you don't implement the books, you need to know how to do that. I think that is the biggest challenge. All teachers should understand that you have to figure out a way in which you do it in a systematic manner, in a child friendly manner, and slowly and steadily build that understanding with the students. So if you are able to do that on your own and if you have that material, very good. Our aim as an organization is to make sure that each and every child on this planet is aware of the uh, problems our planet is facing. It's not that you have to take these books or these books are the only solution. In, think innovatively and figure out the ways you can do it. I'll just show uh, the digital platform, uh, how it looks. So this is a grade four zero hunger. Uh, zero hunger. This is, you can, uh, this is a, voice over also but you can remove that voice over some people have the so first step is to tell students about what is hunger some people have so much food that they often waste it on the other hand many people are hungry and they don't have enough food to live healthy life and we are not saying what is the goal so much food that they often waste and it next read the story we, and discuss the question we tell them about the story a story of uh, in grade four this is for grade four zero hunger we tell them a story it's integrated with english language or uh, sdgs have to be, ha be integrated with your subjects otherwise there is no use and that is why uh, we have done it in a very uh, extensive manner so that each and every school uh, teacher in the school is involved in this work
So in this case, English teacher talks about a stone soup, uh, stone soup story, and she discusses all of those things. So on the digital platform, uh, the student can take it in the books forms. The student will do read the story in the book form. Then you can expand it, and these are some of the features you can download or uh, print it. Um, some of the things. Summer is the story using the SWB stream. And then we are telling the students that you need to summarize. And this is a teacher driven model. So teacher will tell the students that summarize the story using this strategy, which is somebody wanted, but so then strategy and they will, the students will write. So again, the structure, the teacher is building that structure also of English language. Somebody wanted, but so then summary strategy. Then watch the video. And then the students go to the next level and they start watching some of the videos which are available on zero hunger which are again meant just for grade four level sir the questions that follow and once they watch this video they start doing some activities answering some questions which is again shown in the next uh, way they do it so for example here we have asked the students to divide all of these things uh, all of the food material available into um, i'm sorry just in into healthy and unhealthy food and uh, students do this activity they love it this kind of activity because it's interactive it's gamified and they love this kind of a thing and then they again answer a few questions there are a few other questions which they keep answering there are their school style gamification they love students love this kind of aspect and then Towards the end, the worksheet and they get it. another worksheet, which they can complete it. They can print this worksheet and complete the work. And either you do a digital platform or you do the books. It's very similar. The teachers have to drive this course and make it better for the students. Now, there are three things which I wanted to talk about today. One are the SDG, how to integrate SDGs. So I've given you some examples. You can try to do it on your own. If you uh, want to get our support, our help, you can always connect with Abdul sir and Kalyani ji and, uh, or me and we can, we can help your school work out that plan. The second big thing which I want to talk about today are, are the Global Sustainability Awards. We realized that schools were not getting recognized for the efforts they are doing towards sustainability. And if there were any awards, they were paid. So we came out with, with these awards. These uh, We got huge response, immense response from nine countries, four continents. And we have not charged even a single penny from any of the school, any of the uh, teacher or any of the students. This year, there are awards in three areas, three categories. One is for the schools. Second is for the teachers. And third is for the students. Each school has a different application. Student have, students have different application. And have different applications so you as a school if you are applying fill out the school application any number of teachers from a school from one school can apply for the teacher awards not just teacher but non-teaching staff also is encouraged so maybe you have a maid or a peon in your school or a lab assistant who is doing amazing work towards sustainability please fill out their application form it's free of cost. Again, I'm mentioning there is no charge. So don't worry and fill out as many applications as you want for all the teachers who are working towards sustainability. And third are for the students. Uh, students can apply individually or in a group uh, led by teachers also. That's fine. And students can apply for these awards. Uh, they will be recognized for their efforts. And the aim is very simple for these awards. It's not a competition. I keep saying this, it is a collaboration. These awards are not competition. Trust me on this. It's a collaboration where you will learn from each other and help each other grow towards sustainability, towards making this planet a better place. So the aim is that when students or teachers tell about their projects, they should also learn from each other. And when we get together, uh, during the award ceremony, we'll have many networking sessions, many sessions with each other where you will learn from each other.
And third uh, thing which I want to talk about today is some of the programs which we are doing. For example, the waste paper management program or the waste management program in which we are encouraging schools to collect as much waste as possible. And we collect that waste from you. And in, in return, we give students pencils and pens made out of waste paper. So the way it happens is that let's see let's let's say you tell a student tomorrow you bring all of you bring eight newspapers which amount to let's say one kg of uh, paper waste and when you bring by that one kg you will give you one pencil so for every eight nine ten newspapers you give them one pencil made of waste newspaper so what do they learn that nothing is waste this waste can be reutilized recycled repurposed and that's the learning which gets integrated in them so they understand the value of not throwing away anything. And so these kind of programs, you can very well connect with Kalyani ji uh, on many of these programs. She's an expert uh, and she's running a lot of these programs with us very successfully. Um, so those are three things. One are the books or uh, digital solutions to integrate SDGs in your schools. Second, the awards. And third, programs like waste, paper, waste management programs. So I think that is it from my side. Uh, if you want to connect with us, uh, feel free uh, to connect with me or anyone else in our team. And we would love to uh, support your school, your team, uh, and the learning will continue. Thank you so much, everyone, for listening very patiently to me. Thank you. That's interesting, uh, Mr. Anit Gupta. Uh, the, the takeaway for me was, first of all, it starts with creating awareness. So you have rightly mentioned, uh, that's why students of a very, from very young age need to be exposed to sustainable development goals, as you mentioned, so that when they come to grade eight level, they become real problem solvers. And you have also indicated about the thinking routines which you, ask us to integrate when you are uh, integrating uh, SDGs to the curriculum. For example, somebody wanted but so then using a simple strategy can help the students identify where is the problem and who is involved in, this, in that and how the solution will be there. And you have also mentioned about the triangulation part wherein schools can participate, the teaching faculty, non-teaching faculty, plus the students. That's quite interesting. Thank you so much for the valuable insights. Now, moving ahead, we have our next expert. She's none other than Dr. Kalyani Rao. She's Executive Advisor, Sustainability at ARC EdTech. She has around 18 years of experience in HR management, business development, branding in IT, electronics, education, and CSR sectors. She is a UN SDG expert in project planning, sustainability assessments, and waste management professional. I would like to invite Dr. Kalyani Rao to the podium, virtual podium, to speak on how to connect SDGs into student life and why. What are those requirements and the future SDG events? Over to you, Dr. Kalyani Rao, and the screen is all yours. Thank you so much, JMM. That's a wonderful and crispy introduction about me. Thanks a lot. And I too heard about your expertise areas. I'm so lucky to have you a moderator today being introduced today. I mean, about me, I'm very lucky today. And uh, before starting this little speech, uh, I mean, whatever the delivery, I would like to thank uh, Dr. Abdul Salam, sir, a program coordinator for this. Also a very good supportive person and I always admire him as a good soul. Thank you so much, sir, for giving this opportunity. Uh, I would like to say a great saying from a great personality called, uh, change is a real action, but not a prayer or a meditation. Change is not a real action, but not a prayer or a meditation. It was a great message uh, from a well-renowned honorary saint, Dr. Dalai Lama. 
So I'm a favorite of I'm a favorite uh, favorite person. And I follow Dalai Lama a lot. So the 17 Sustainable Development Goals were adopted by the United Nations member states in 2015 to end the poverty, to reduce the inequality, and build more peaceful, prosperous societies by 2030. Are they to empower globally? Investing SDGs in young minds is to achieve a more equitable and to promote, among others, through education by leading a sustainable human life, which acts like a tool to support them to deliver their research skills, critical thinking, creativity, problem solving, teamwork, and communication. Kalyani, ma'am, you are not audible at times. Please check your uh, microphone. Now? Yes, yes. Actually, it is on and off. Maybe you can repeat the last sentence. Okay. Investing SDGs in young minds is to just to achieve a more equitable and to promote among others through education by leading a sustainable human life acts like a tool to support them to develop their research skills, critical thinking, creativity, problem solving, teamwork, and communication skills. Also, to support the 21st century skills to prepare the young lives towards the real world problems and to face it with the real action in the future. Quality education goal empowers the global human, the global young minds with the knowledge, skills, values, and attitudes to address the interconnected global changes, challenges uh, to fight ahead. Uh, uh, it's not uh, at all audible. It breaks in between. Can you check the system? It is full audible, sir. Just a minute. I don't know. I have... Still, you Am I audible now? Uh, at times only. At times only we can hear you. It's a network issue, sir. Because yeah, uh, now, someone, now, sir. now better, now better. Please go ahead. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. you can do one thing. You can switch off your uh, camera. Okay. And try, it, please. I think it's better now. Yeah, please, a bit louder, you can speak. Okay. It's in full volume, sir. The quality education goal empowers the global young minds with the knowledge, skills, values, and attitudes to address the interconnected global challenges to fight against the climate changes, carbon footprint, forestation, e-waste, environmental degradation, loss of biodiversity, poverty, and equality. Students need empathy to develop healthy relationships throughout their lives by taking empathy and transforming it into action-based compassion. Students can start community initiatives and they are passionate about it or get involved in local organizations that create change and unite our world. Teachers do not need to be experts in topics uh, such as uh, responsible consumption or clean energy to teach the SDGs. They can learn and explore these issues alongside the, their students and plan ways to take action together. Once students have an understanding of these SDGs and why they are necessary, they will be inspired to make positive things in big and small ways. By practicing sustainability empowers children to construct knowledge, explore values and develop respect towards nature, which lays the foundations for an environmentally responsible adulthood in the next future. With this, students act sustainably in their daily lives is to foster environmental and consciousness and lifelong learning in their classroom by practicing the major principles like connect and develop respect towards the nature, under analyze the climate climatic changes, initiate a service project with peers, learn about all sectors of people who make a difference in society, research on various businesses and its products with their effects of carbon footprint and green gas emissions start an environmental awareness challenge or create a model of mindful mindfulness to visit the grandparents 
animal rescue centers, old age homes, etc. And also promote and create posters or presentations on uh, to inspire others with a message or a theme of SDGs. Also encourage out of the box thinking and spread to local communities. Meet and collaborate. Let them meet and collaborate with NGOs and government schools for better outputs. So these SDGs key benefits of learnings and experiences reflect on students' life to improve the quality of life. Let the young lives protect, preserve, and conserve the natural environment for their future needs. The young lives succeed to achieve the stability and the society experience with a good quality of life upon the natural environment. Educators can create or suggest few important key suggestions to inspire and motivate. SDG activities as a classroom project, fundraising campaigns, uh, creative arts, sale of uh, recycled products, cleanup activities, zero waste drives, debates, uh, MUNs to collect like sponsorships, or even they can do a blog writing, a general writing, a general a journal writing for school magazines or newsletters, or even the, for their personal blogs. Meeting farmers at farms, it is also a big interactive session for them, interviewing the farmers, and they can create a short film on that topics, and they can present it, uh, or they can apply for the documentary competitions. Gardening at school premises is also one of the biggest uh, uh, tasks, also a, a great uh, fun for them, and at homes, even at back backyards, home backyards, and even at balconies. And they can collaborate with government schools. They can promote these uh, projects there. Weekly plantation programs is also one of the biggest uh, uh, entertainment for them. Surveys and researches on climate changes is also a big massive change which brings within their lifestyle. At Participate Learning, uh, we are passionate about uniting our world through global learning. So are you celebrating this Earth Day 20? Uh, say first 2022 in our classrooms, in your classrooms normally, right? But why can't the whole year, as per the current scenario, it is not celebrating. It has to be dedicated towards the earth to celebrate on its own birthday. At least for next 10 years, we need to celebrate every day. That means the situations are like that. It's not a celebration. We have to dedicate our work or allow our compassion towards the earth. So this is the way you need to convey to the students the celebration is just a one day, so celebrate every day. So let the students learn the SDGs that are linked with our daily life. For example, uh, just give them a thought to think about activities such as cloth distribution for the need and underprivileged, linked with that goal number one, no poverty. Suppose a wedge, wedge rice distribution or a kitchen distribution program uh, on a Sunday, on a weekend, that is linked with goal number two, zero hunger and also menstrual health hygiene cover awareness camp or distribution of cloth sanitary napkins to girls students it will also link with good health and well-being the goal number three so these are all a sample project activities we can celebrate in entire year academics along with the educators so even in summer holidays time give them some assignment ask them to come with the initiatives with a, a kind of evidences when they're enjoying the holidays it's going to be a great assignment for them ask them to connect to the relevant goals of the SDGs, let them conduct a biodiversity audit, which include right from the home and then to the local communities. Let, for example, ask them to take a uh, survey uh, on a plastic items right from the kitchen to the entire home. See how many plastic items they will find. So these kind of things will come and they will analyze it. This much of plastic we are using in our daily life. So why can't we avoid all these things? So this is a question mark you have to give always put a question mark in their brain. Then the answer will come within themselves. So this will give them amazing result and a very brilliant change in their thought process and behavior. And even they will project on the goals very focused. I mean, with very lot of focus and give them a choice of girl and uh, goal and then the relevant activity, what they have to do it. Let two people can be assigned for each goal. Ask them to complete the task in certain period. Let them present in a PowerPoint presentation with the evidences, videos, and uh, even the photographs wherever they visited. So this will definitely going to know, uh, going to give them a complete perfection, and the task will be completed successfully, no doubt in it. Even you can assign small activities to pre-primary and primary level students, like a plant a native garden, start a vegetable garden, make a home for schoolyard critters, uh, critters, butterflies 
frogs and lizards, ask them to create a butterfly garden and a bird sanctuary uh, in their home or even at the school classroom. Ask them to plant trees or plants or small, small seeds in the class school grounds. Let them know how to do the plantation also. And ask them to create a bird box or a frog box. So these are the many, many things which we have uh, coming across for the students to encourage and to be more active participation in the local and global community levels to solve the biggest challenges the world, the world is facing right now, today. So when students become a global leaders and have an appreciation for cultural differences, they see, the, them, they see themselves as citizens of the world and take responsibility to, to enact uh, change on a global scale. So together with the teachers and students, we can be a powerful, uh, you all can be powerful force for achieving the United Nations vision of a more peaceful, healthy and equitable world by 2030. Finally, I would like to conclude with my sincere thanks again, once again, my gratitude for Abdullah Salam sir, for the lot of support and understanding and sir will be the primary uh, contact and also our ambassador for ARC for anything he will be uh, taking care of the communication part and all. So you can all contact sir for any kind of this uh, information requirement. And uh, I'm thanking CBC Bar Sahodaya for this great, wonderful opportunity for allowing me to share my thoughts and plans of action uh, towards SDGs in students' life through the great stay, uh, stay, great SDG warriors who are all presented here today, uh, who are none other than our, our educators. So also thanking Anit Gupta sir for permitting me to present to our, also my friend Abhilasha here, who introduced me to Abdul sir. Uh, thank you all the educators here for listening to my message with a lot of patience and interest. I hope so. <laughs> thank you all once again. And over to the moderator, Ms. Jaya Ma'am. Thank you so much, Dr. Kalyani Rao. You have spoken about small doable actions that caught my attention actually. You have spoken about action-based compassion. Also, you have nailed it by saying that understanding of SDGs through practice, connect and develop respect towards nature. So this is where we can start building compassion in the society through SDGs. You have also spoken about out-of-box thinking. Then you mentioned about collaboration within and outside, which is very, very important because we cannot work in silos. We need to expand and we need to extend our, um, you know, our um, kind of collaboration with others so that major people can be benefited with what are we capable of. And you have even mentioned about NGOs, government schools to be collaborated with a local uh, so that we can have that connect from local to national to global. And you also mentioned about starting with a small survey, then do analysis and then coming and finding out solution. That's nothing but developing scientific thinking in this entire process is what I have got as a takeaway. Thank you so much, uh, ma'am. Now, our next expert for this evening is Ms. Abhilasha Singh. She is a principal of Shining Star International School, Abu Dhabi. She's very enthusiastic and innovative principal. And she is an SDG activist. I must tell, I know her uh, ever since we, uh, you know, teach SDG groups were created. And I have been, uh, you know, got so much opportunity to interact with her because she was an SDG ambassador for Global Goals Project as well. Abhilasha, ma'am, over to you for your reflection on SDGs and the way you connect SDG goals in your school. And how do you? lead particularly SDG in your learning ecosystem. The audience and myself, all of us are eagerly waiting to hear from you. Over to you, Ms. Abhilasha, and the screen is all yours. Thank you so much, uh, Jaya, for a wonderful welcome. First and foremost, uh, let me first congratulate Dr. Abdul Salam, sir, uh, for uh, this uh, wonderful position uh, and also the initiative for Kerala. I can uh, confidently say that uh, all Kerala schools are in good hand because uh, I know Dr. Salam uh, for the last uh, so many years and I have seen a Oxford school reaching new zeniths uh, under his uh, uh, able leadership. I've seen the students making such wonderful progress and sir also is one of those principals who is on his toes 
and he has an amazing i mean his his thinking hats are varied and uh, very creative very innovative in his uh, in, in his approach uh, to leadership and uh, 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 he is a wonderful person to work with as well so abdul salam sir all salam to you uh, all the very best and uh, sd even sdgs are going to have a new take off uh, in kerala schools i am aware of it and i am confident and not just schools but as a whole community uh, it is he, he is the right person uh, to have been uh, offered this post wonderful so congratulations sir once again thank you and, thank you uh, very nice also... to meet you once again <laughs> yeah long time <laughs> long time sir is doing amazing work even with the bharat sahodya also uh, now i i have lost count of the 100 plus session that sir has uh, initiated it all started with just that first session uh, was about how to integrate sdgs in school curriculum and then from there that it took off and sir has uh, has conducted i think on all the subjects i mean not just uh, about uh, common subjects but then now to specific uh, subject wise especially for grade 10 and grade 12 new assessment patterns uh, that has been very very helpful so all those sessions have been super helpful helpful especially during the corona pandemic and how to use edtech tools and all that wonderful sir so this is what i mean this is what i mean when i say that you know sir abdul salam is the right person uh, for un sdgs in schools in in, in kerala and it, for the community now to uh, to to get back to the original what jaya was uh, has introduced me as uh, first and foremost uh, sorry secondly uh, a big thank you to arc for have initiated the uh, sustainability prize and this also creates an opportunity for the schools to initiate activities in the school as part of global citizenship and make the entire school community a first and foremost aware and then feel responsible towards our responsibility our commitment to fulfill agenda 2030 uh, i believe that uh, agenda 2030 is a collective responsibility each one of us has that uh holds that responsibility to ensure that we and our immediate community that surrounds us is aware and then takes part uh, to fulfill uh, our role and what actions we can take uh, even at like grassroots level to above so that uh, agenda 2030 becomes a reality we know that it's a lot of hard work but then each it's like that drop in the ocean and each drop counts so similarly each and everybody's actions count and uh, similarly uh, i am very grateful to mr anit uh, for have uh, started uh, co-founded to have a first and foremost thought about arc co-founded arc and then to bring it at school level to in to uh, you know uh, in, include the school communities into this uh, program uh, and the initiative so that all actions become meaningful actions impactful actions towards agenda 2030 uh, 20, uh, 2030 so it is like you know what i'm trying to uh, say over here is that it is the commitment from each and every individual and especially individuals who feel so strongly about education and and uh, education for sustainable development that we have arc and we have this platform where we've come together and it's so heartful to see that there are 279 participants here which is like a very powerful number and these 2279 when you go back to your communities you bring this awareness to another 279 you know so that's how the tribe grows and at school level i think uh, it is very important for all leadership uh, in the schools to be aware and be committed Uh, to embed education for sustainable development in the curriculum and we in shining star take pride uh, to have been doing some amazing work uh, in that line and uh, we uh, a sdgs are embedded in the curriculum so we have uh, the entire uh, school curriculum when it is broken into a long term plan and a medium term plan it sees embedding of sdgs in in each and every chapter so while in the lesson planning also wherever the teacher can very comfortably connect with the sdgs related to that particular chapter or the core relating sdgs it is taken care of as a conversation in the class along with stand alone activities which starts with a 
uh, starting a vegetable garden, creating uh, activities where the students map their carbon footprint uh, to uh, now with the school getting back uh, in uh, full time. Uh, we are also initiating again our uh, composting unit. And then we participate in goals project, the climate action project and say no to plastic uh, the, every year. So these are a standalone uh, uh, programs uh, that we do. And uh, we also have a climate conference, uh, which engages with all the schools in the region where we invite students to participate. And apart from this, like I said, that a celebration of each and every uh, pro uh, international day uh, and turning it into uh, uh, and connecting it to the to the sustainable development goals, the ones with, which are then correlate to that event. So all that happens and the awareness is right from KG to grade 12. So we've got uh, international partnerships where we uh, have common projects with the schools uh, around the world. And, uh, you know, this uh, is integrated very uh, is sort of interwoven into the school curricula so that it does not become an added burden to the teachers uh, and also for the students, but it is part of the school curriculum, which starts from the beginning of the year and very smoothly it runs. So we have created uh, one activity period uh, once a week on Friday. Uh, we have a 50 minute activity period in which then we uh, use that period, uh, the time, a uh, dedicated protected time uh, for all the SDG related uh, uh, work. So that way, you know, it is not like it doesn't become an added burden, but at the same time, it also is part of the school curriculum. So that way, uh, it, it it all is a part in, a, like, you know, a hand in glove kind of a thing. And also we have great engagement from parents. Our parents have been very supportive in all our initiatives. And this year with the school coming full, uh, full attendance face to face, we are hoping to have some more initiatives like tree plantation, beach cleaning, uh, and of course the vegetable garden, which is again being initiated and the composting. These are four things that we're looking forward to. And uh, especially like as and when the days come uh, and, and there are new projects that are coming along, we'll think of some more initiative and innovative ones that uh, you'll keep, you'll see it on the social media when we post it. So not, not taking a lot of time, just emphasizing on why uh, SDGs are important to uh, to to embed in the school curriculum, and how SDGs in fact help the students to improve twenty uh, first century learning skills like critical thinking, creativity, innovation, and at the same time also helps them to develop life skills. There are soft skills that the children need to develop, which are which to make them future ready. And also, like, you know, when you teach SDGs at school level, it is seen that the children's A, uh, environmental education, it improves, it also impacts their academic performance. Uh, like I said, it enhances critical thinking skills and develops life skills. So I'm going to relate, over, I'm going to quote over here the uh, Stanford University Review, uh, which conducted 119 pre-reviewed, uh, peer-reviewed articles, which said that, that found Studies uh, found that environmental education improves academic performance and 90% of the studies reviewed saw increased skills for students and 86% saw positive changes in students. So, you know, this is how uh, and 92% of children said that they cared more about the social and environmental issues after learning about SDGs. So this is, again, uh, why SDGs should be taught in school and it also helps to enhance students' self-esteem, uh, their autonomy, character development, maturity, empowerment, verbal communication, leadership, poise, and also teamwork, the ability to collaborate with each other. So these are very important life skills to get them future ready and for the future success. And uh, taking uh, classes out to the schoolyard or taking them outside the classroom also uh, does amazing things to the mental ability of the children and their well-being. So all the schools... Uh, all the, it's a leadership, in fact, responsibility to ensure that UN SDGs become part of the school curriculum. So uh, thanks a lot for uh, inviting me to speak today. It's my honor uh, to always be here with, uh, uh, on, on international platform and especially uh, to Dr. Salam. In fact, I owe my UAE uh, presence to Dr. Salam. It's a, it's a long story uh, and it's a, it's, a, it's a very sweet story. So that's for some other time. But again, I remain thankful to Dr. Salam for for my UAE uh, is the John. So over back to you, Jaya. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much for inviting me. And Kalyani, thank you so much for making me part of this uh, program today. 
Back to you, sir. Thank you so much, uh, Ms. Abrasha Singh. You have completed the golden circle of what, why, and how of SDGs. You have connected to life skills. You have spoken about future-facing model. Yes, we all are working on future-facing model, how we can integrate. Plus, you have spoken about standalone, not only integration, every time integration does it help. We need to take up composting and all those areas as standalones as well. And you have proved yourself as a principal learner of your school because you have spoken about creating awareness plus participation as a principal. So you are a compassionate leader. And you, I could see through, throughout your conversation, I could see that passion. And you have spoken about our commitment as leaders to, um, for Agenda 2030, the collective responsibility that all of us have when we have to have the environmental stewardship or the shared guardianship of this planet. And you mentioned uh, very interesting, interestingly about the celebration of international days. So much to learn from you. And thank you so much for your uh, meaningful input. Now I open the question and answer session, uh, requesting participants to unmute yourself so that you can ask these experts any of the question that you might be having or you might have stored throughout. Would you like to unmute and speak? Or you can put in the chat box. Uh, participants can interact with uh, any of us. Uh, Mr. Anit, uh, Ms. Afilasha, Ms. Kalyani Rao. So you can ask questions to particularly to them. You can raise your hands and we will unmute you. So thank you so much, Abhilasha, ma'am, uh, for the authentic, you know, uh, words. Definitely, uh, it means a lot. And uh, to the participants, if you, if at any time, if you feel that you are lacking motivation, just speak to Abhilasha, ma'am. Just, uh, you know, really, I, I have learned a lot from Abhilasha, ma'am, uh, which I have, you know, tried to, uh, in fact, copy and uh, do it in my school and elsewhere. So, uh, even Kalyani Rao, ma'am, and, uh, you know, Anit, sir, they are here very much, you know, they are very helpful to uh, achieve this, these goals. And uh, uh, just like Anit, sir, has said, uh, we may maybe we should not be waiting for others to you know implement the goals by 2030 we have to take the initiative by ourselves so we have uh, two hands raised up uh yeah. Yeah, please. miss priyanka miss priyanka we are asking you to unmute are you getting the dialogue asking to unmute could you please unmute yourself miss priyanka Yeah, we'll go to uh, Miss Vaishali. Would you like to unmute yourself? Yes, ma'am. Would you be able to? Yeah. Yeah. Please go ahead, Miss Vaishali. Yeah, we can hear you, Ms. Vaishali. Would you like to go ahead and ask our experts what is that coming to your mind when it comes to integrating SDGs to school curriculum? You cannot hear, Ms. Vaishali. So let's go to Ujala. We cannot hear you, yeah, Ujala. Yes, Ms. Ujala, would you like to unmute yourself? Is there any other way to unmute them first? Uh, Mr. Arun Mohan, would you like to help me? No, I am doing it. I am doing it. Let others not do it. I am asking them to unmute. Ms. Ujala, you can unmute yourself. Yeah, good evening. Can everyone hear me? Yes, yes loud sir. and clear. Yeah. Uh, thank you. First of all, I would like to say it was a very wonderful session. Uh, secondly, my question is, uh, I am a teacher from uh, Bharati Vidya Pune. 
uh, my question is that we do implement sdg uh, in our school from last one year uh, but it seems that when we are implementing and taking two goals or at the most three to four goals in a year uh, it is helping out uh, to our students like when we try to you know uh, focus on all the goals at the same time uh, it becomes a little difficult for the children because by the time they learn you know about one goal in a full fledged manner and then we uh, talk about suppose zero uh, hunger or we i go for uh, a clean city so it becomes you know children are sometimes a little confused so can you please uh, throw light on how to go about is it uh, good to go two three to uh, two to three goals in a year or uh, like at the same time uh, all the goals ma'am um, i think abhilasha ma'am please aap batai please go ahead uh, thank you so much uh, anit uh, uh, sorry for uh, jumping in actually i would i, I wanted to share a practical advice like how we are doing it and uh, then of course uh, uh, basanit will share his uh, uh, expert advice regarding how with resources and all so how we do it is that we have given a theme of we have chosen one sdg for one month so we are starting with april and then april is will have one sdg we are starting with good health and well being so then we see the month and we see the activities that we have in the school for that month and then we select a particular sdg from the 17 and that we place it in that particular month so then all the activities that are then created are around uh, that sdg so that way in a in, in that one year you know we've been able to cover now it's been two years so we have been able to cover uh, all the goals and not not all if but but a few are there which at school level you can only do awareness because it requires a lot of resources in terms of technical things that you need uh, uh, and those are expensive so then you can only do an electronic version of it and all that uh, and and you know those challenges but then another way of doing it also is that you you take the 17 goals and you spread it across the school cycle wise that is section wise say primary kg to grade 12 and then you know on a cyclic basis then you you uh, 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 cross it out i mean you implement it across the school so say in the first term you've got these particular goals 17 goals which we implemented by or will be the awareness will be uh, say grade 1 is doing goal 1 grade 2 is doing goal 3 like that you can then uh, uh, prepare a plan in which by the end of the year each class has taken up Uh, at least one or two goals and that way in in two years time or say by the end of the year you your you your school will be able uh, your school would have all the classes would have covered almost all the goals and do sign up for the climate action project that is uh, on uh, earth project you can sign up or climateaction.info then you've got the goals project you can sign up on earth project or uh, uh, on, on the website Uh, take you can look up take take action global and then there is the plastic challenge say no to plastic that comes in april uh, but the main the flagship ones are the climate action project and the goals project uh, climate action will be in uh, sometime between september overlapping with october and goals project is in january so these are the two main uh, uh, main uh, projects that you should be part of and this again will bring you a lot of international international connections in your uh, school and then is uh, if you have not looked up already i would advise you i would guide you towards uh, the world uh, largest lesson plan they have got amazing resources pre prepared lesson plans which again you can take a lot of info from so this would actually help you uh, in implementation of uh, the sdgs in your school uh, mr anit would you come in uh, and talk about uh, the other resources yes thank you ma'am you have covered everything um but i think i just want to add there are three things which uh, researchers say that the best implementation of sdgs can be done in three by taking three big steps one is awareness through education second is awareness through activities and third is innovation now as ma'am you asked there can be different levels and different ways in which three of these activities are um, uh, attributed like for example you when we talk about awareness through education 
uh, you need to choose the right goals for each grade level. A first grade student might not be able to understand peace, justice, and strong institutions. A grade two student might not be able to understand gender equality to, to that extent. So you need to define which grades you want to talk about which goals, but that just covers the part of awareness through education. Second, when we do awareness through activities, you need to define activities maybe at a, like Ablasham and said, like at a grade level, section level, school level, that can be anything. So maybe you take it as a uh, primary, uh, for primary and middle school, you say we are doing zero hunger. For senior school, we are doing uh, quality education and then do activities around it. So you need to define some activities, taking them out uh, for some projects involving many other students. So that activity awareness part is very important or your students can create uh, movies, create uh, reels about SDGs and post it, uh, not on social media, but obviously in your schools and which your school can take care of. So that is awareness through uh, activities. And third is innovation. I think for innovation, you need to work closely with your senior students and define some of the goals which they are going to innovate for. So don't let them just talk about it and talk about it. Help them innovate because kids the kids can only do the best kind of innovation. We can, our minds are stuck. We are stuck somewhere. When we grow old, our minds are not that open. And I think that is where these children come up with brilliant innovation ideas. So those are three levels, ma'am. And uh, let us know if uh, we can support you in any way possible. Thank you. It is all about taking action. Uh, there's another thing I'd like to add over here is uh, uh, taking action online. So it's not just about uh, advocacy, like it's about advocacy, activism and taking action and taking action at local level and also uh, encourage students uh, to take action online. And that would be about uh, initiating a chat on Twitter uh, on based on SDGs and also uh, 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 taking out a post, blogging. So there are many ways of taking action online. Uh, it's all about spreading awareness. It is about advocacy and about activism. And this is the decade of action. So we have to have projects that would impact uh, the world and not just projects which are research work and all that, and they remain words on paper. I hope your doubts are cleared. Now we have Suganti. Would you like to unmute? Suganti. Suganti has gone. Yes. We'll, we'll listen to Pinky. Okay. Yes, Miss Pinky, you can unmute yourself and ask a question. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, still echoing. Suganti, ma'am, you want to go first? I think there is a problem uh, in her. Uh, no, Pingi, ma'am, you, you, like can, you can speak. Yeah. Now it's okay. Uh, thank you, uh, sir. Good evening to all. Uh, Salam, sir. We meet again. Thank you so much after the award ceremony and uh, there was uh, like a quite of insight from uh, Anit sir, Kalyani ma'am, and all of you here, even Avilasha ma'am. Thank you for uh, all the insight and all the uh, plans, how you all take it up in the school. So here I just wanted to, uh, one is my question is, I if we want to collaborate with schools, right? So if we can have a platform where we can easily like connect to schools who really want to, uh, go uh, with a serious collaboration. But just as Salam sir said that mentioned, we don't just do it for the sake of doing it for a specific time and then we don't sustain it. So because uh, SDG is about sustaining the project and taking it forward, it might be even it can the collaboration can go for the entire year or taken up even the next year so that there's a good impact. Now here, just as a school, uh, like uh, I'm from Glendale, so most of you must be knowing me. Uh, we had uh, collaborated during the SDG project, Oxford SDG project. And here even, I just wanted to share a few things, what we start, as we said, like ma'am just said that 
how do we start with the students? So yes, when we go uh, according to the SDG goals, and as Anit sir said, few goals are really difficult. We need to identify the goals where it is child friendly and the age appropriate goals. Now, as a uh, school, like uh, as a school, how we started because when we say it starts from us, right? So the, uh, firstly, before introducing the goals to the students, what we did in our school, like we uh, in a very uh, child friendly way we made them understand what are the advantage and disadvantage of many activities right like suppose when we talk about zero hunger how we took it up was a fistful of rice so when the student they get the tiffin box so there is one small box with rice uh, right not cooked rice so there we had a, a nice uh, uh, setup where they would go every day and just donate that so every child does that. So it's like sharing the meal with the uh, other people in need. So they come with that tiffin box and out, during the break time, they go and donate that fistful of rice. So we had collected tons of rice and then we donated it way forward. And it didn't even take, a, uh, I think it was about a month uh, initiative where there was uh, tons of rice, which we could donate to Azar Maksusi. He is one of the, uh, real hero who is feeding lots and lots of people in Hyderabad. So we collaborated and we uh, uh, donated the rice. Then second, steel bottles and tiffins. If we can just ask the parents if they can just do away with all the, because it's even has the health hazards, right? The plastic bottle. So that is where we can even initiate no plastic zone in the school. So steel bottles and tiffins, if that is uh, where we can ask the parents and I would, I, we all agree parents would not say no to that. So there, that small steps take that conscious effort of the student and they understand about it. Then again, we have this no wrapper zone. So see, uh, children would love to eat chocolates and biscuits, right? So from, uh, we just kept a Friday where they can get uh, anything in a wrapper. So otherwise, because then again, we cater to both the good health and well-being where we don't allow junk food. So Friday, it's a wrapper day where they can get any uh, food which is around the wrapper, right? So, so these small actions, I feel that should be the start of how to introduce the goals to the students. So then they get into that mode and then they understand how we are taking it up. So then we can uh, gradually introduce the UNSDG. So these are the small setups we can do in school and just uh, make them comfortable with what they are doing, just starting the goals at a go. Just introducing that it becomes a little too much for them. So that is one way we are just, I was sharing it so that it might help if you would like to take it up in your school. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, all of you here. I would like to add a few lines to Pinky Ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Pinky Ma'am has given a lot of information. According to the ARC uh, SDG books, which you observed, if you see the grade one book, grade two book, uh, there are only limited goals with the activities, storytelling, right from storytelling to yes, small, small activities, even painting, poster cutting, all these things are included. Even I felt like to uh, have to each each book I have gone through one one day. Actually, I have got, I asked him to deliver one complete set. Yeah, of I saw books. that. Yes, ma'am. It was, uh, so it was so amazing. So whatever you're doing this activity, including the book when you give, you know, storytelling, even a parent can do it and they will remember more a lot when you tell a story compared to the, uh, when you teach on a board and actually visuals also are important. So give some sure, sure. Uh, that type of task and also try to give a small orientation sessions for parents, how to motivate them through the through their level because junior, uh, the pre-primary, primary section mostly uh, have the influence of the parents and the teachers. So the parents, uh, when you give a small orientation to them, at least monthly ones, make them also involved in your project. Let them also come and do some activity or let them participate in any plantation program which school conducts or even donation programs. Let them be campaigners for you people. Even for a small birthday party, tell your students, don't give the written, written gifts which they're going to purchase nowadays. Tell them to go for a recycle products. So that's the reason I'm telling you, give an orientation session for parents. Tell them how important the recycles product, what is the impact on students on that. So when the students will try to learn all these things at the grassroots level, automatically 
no need to uh, get information from parents. So after two, three years, if you see, totally they will be having the awareness. Yes. Wherever they go, they will object. Don't plastic. Please use the uh, 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 paper straw. So these are the things which I found. For example, beach cleanup was totally zero in my city in 2014. When we started, all the parents in my school, they objected. They were against me. And there was uh, some people said, how can you ask me to ask, uh, my child to go to a beach and take care of the trash? I never allow my child to even to take a glass at my home. But I told the parents, I've given some orientation. Just see the change. This is not for your home, for me. It's for the planet. And we are not going to take the trash. Don't think like it is our own trash. We are only the culprits. We are the person who going and creating a, ma a mess on the beach. So if everybody will get that awareness automatically it will going to clear so first year we have little bit second year we have found a lot of and then every year when you're doing parents started coming and joining today if you see the beach totally there is no trash so whenever we go for beach cleaning i ask the municipality people please for two days don't clean the trash especially on saturday sunday i will come and pick up on monday so this is my request from last three four years and this is really great change so change will not come to just like a miracle on a day night it has to come to your from your house from your apartment from your local community right from the uh, this uh, birthday parties try to give awards to the birthday parties when the students have done you know the job like plantation and recycling things put conduct a recycle exhibition give them some awards so see these are the small small, small things but a lot of fun make them to dress up in a waste paper you know, fashion show. It's going to, and all kind of uh, plastic wrappers, let them come and uh, decorate themselves. So many things are there. You can also give a small information to parents. Parents going to play a lot of role in, role in this. I think so. Yes, ma'am. Right? Yes, ma very, very rightly said, because right now we see that the impact is more on students and they are leading the parents instead of parents leading the students. So once they are conscious, it's like, uh, it's, it becomes very, very easy for the teacher and obviously for the community. If you, if I just have one minute, I would like to share a very important uh, uh, in, uh, like uh, initiative we took. We took as an electricity manager. And it's been two years since we are doing that, where child was responsible for, uh, they took up the role of electricity manager at their homes. And we were told that whatever difference you make in the electricity bill, right? the previous bill from your what the first when we gave the initiative first so uh, the last uh, bill whatever you compare the bill if you, you made a difference of even 200 rupees so ask your parents to give that 200 rupees put it in your piggy bank right put it in your piggy bank or have a family treat have something you want to have so that way and that like gave them so much of excitement and they have started and it's become a habit See, initially, we just took it as a fun activity, which now has become a an habit. And we are getting so many testimonials from the parents saying that, yes, it's, it has really worked. And it is going. It's been two years. We have taken it up in uh, 2020, this initiative. And it's like it's become most of the students have inculcated this habit where it's just going on. So I feel that these are the things where we really can make a difference. Because see, uh, even uh, we did the cleaning up lake over here in Hyderabad and it was, uh, uh, we have even uh, donated money to sustain it with the plantation, which will go year along. And we need to just, so that is what I really want to emphasize that it should not just be for that time being. And it has to be taken care of for years because when you have put hard work since like two months hard work, just let's not get, it should not go waste, right? So you should see that uh, end product and it really is like very pleasing. Thank you. Thank you for the time. Salam, sir. Thank you so much. Salam, sir, for global questions, if you require, you play, please collect the details for any project. We can connect through you. We can give a, a international collaboration for schools. But a lot, every year, one month or two months, we do the collaborations. So any project, let them come to you. Sir will be the point of contact. So he will message me what project you required. We can do the collaboration. Sure, thank, thank you. you. Thank uh, you. So yeah, we we'll Pinky, ma'am. Uh, one one more thing, uh, just to connect to what Pinky ma'am was relating. There was a question: How we can include and integrate mathematics in SDGs? This this is one of the examples what Pinky ma'am was telling, making you know students managers of electricity 
they can you measure the calculation i mean uh, the units yes i mean right sir, yes sir uh, can i show a slide on this please please uh, so just give me a second if you look at this um i'll show you the slide for mathematics because a lot of people ask this question so this is like the mathematics integration sheet in grade 2 we are talking with kids about grade 2 or 3 we are talking about how much water uh, is there in the ocean how much water is there on our planet and how much is drinkable so they are marking this in a pictogram format and they are then they realize that only one drop is available which is of use to mankind and so water is though we have water everywhere but is it is very scarce so this is a maths activity another activity which we have in a seventh grade book is calculating the carbon footprint and this is what kids love they we give a, we have given a formula and this is under um, basically uh, this is under sustainable consumption and production and we said that what is your carbon footprint and on the next page uh, in the workbook they calculate their own carbon footprint based on how much do they spend as a family and they love doing this activity because they start comparing with each other seeing it with each other so maths uh, can be integrated in many ways in fact music also can be integrated sir in many ways it's not just about maths we have seen here we have a music uh, uh, activity which is for good health and well being then there is an art activity and in zero hunger so all of these things can be integrated sir wonderful sir so definitely this is going to help us a lot thank you yes, and we have just 5 uh, to 10 minutes left uh, jaya yeah. ma'am please can take we... questions from yeah. shrivalli yes shrivalli miss shrivalli would you like to unmute and speak yes ma'am uh, hello everyone it was really a wonderful session uh, in a, like i'm from novel international school pune we started doing sdgs from last year like from 21 22 and we participated uh, for among various schools there's a competition and we uh, have taken a goal number 14 life under water our school children presented and all uh later that i found like i heard from many other schools we completed all these sdg activities in the first semester actually this is for second semester uh mostly in december i think december january somewhere around like that we have taken this uh, this competition i'm talking collaborating with different schools so i just wanted to know how they all finished i'm little confused how they all finished it prior and and also how to collaborate with other schools regarding this regard in sdgs for sdgs hello am i audible yes yes, yes. yes. yeah so uh, kalyani ma'am would you like to take the question uh, it's totally uh, 50% to related to academics they have to plan the academics event calendar along with the activities calendar for the next total one year always so we yes. in normal right so yeah. you have to keep a plan of action or uh, duration suppose if you are taking a uh, uh, you should see the academic examination time so in examination time we don't do any activities example in india is different timing in gulf in different times in india normally uh, right from september totally we don't do it's because it's the second semester examination again in january third semester will come and final year will be the march and april so in between that we will plan the activities and also we should see the outing like summer time we don't take students outside so yes, keep yes. goals which is useful according to the grade level which grade you are handling ma'am i'm handling 7th standard 6th standard ma'am so well uh, you can keep a kind of a time table we have to create a kind time table of the uh, sdg activities uh, weekends or maybe especially on saturdays take them to outing like uh, to the homes and nearby yes ma'am i got that point but yeah. collaborating with other schools okay. collaborating with other schools you want to do nationally or internationally or within your city nationally is fine within city and nationally we can so do. you have to highlight the point of the project what exactly your theme what what is your uh, 
expectation uh, from the other school that is important without okay. knowing that no school will be connected to you right so right yes. to sir what is that project or maybe sir is having too many contacts he'll also he'll also will help you if not okay. sir will let me know so we will connect we'll ask nearby the schools because you want to go and meet them personally then you can select from your own city you can go and talk yes. to the school. otherwise you want to do virtual connection that's easy anybody can do it but we need, we should also think about their academic schedule accordingly we need to request so most yes. uh, most uh, most of the time is october november december the collaborations will be doing i mean we will the mostly will happen in internationally and nationally so think that time where students will be free from the examination time yes okay ma'am thank you yes, yes. Uh, rightly sir you can you can practice both local collaboration and international collaboration international collaboration you have time maybe from october onwards we can do it but locally you have to find identify schools nearby yours and you can do collaborations physically with them and uh, for international collaborations you can be in touch with us we'll be able to help you and abhilasha ma'am has also shared a few you know uh, what do you call organization names in the chat box yes sir i over to jodi shrimali shrimali yes please miss jodi unmute please and uh, you can ask your question yes yeah good evening everyone i would like to know how to get the link for uh, uh, the entire session and uh, one question i wanted to ask that how to incorporate uh, sdg in uh, mathematics so uh, already the example has been showed so thank you thank you very much it's a very wonderful session I don't thanks a lot question uh, how to get links for the nda program we didn't get which program you are talking about no Is this session only no this session only the link for this session youtube link or something which so yes, i yes, can yes. refer it okay okay you please go to the bharat sahodaya youtube channel please uh, you can type it is also posted in the chat box bharat sahodaya youtube channel it will be uploaded maybe tomorrow or day after tomorrow okay okay, okay. and uh, okay. examples for integrating mathematics is already shown by anit sir and also we have the you know uh, what do you call we will send you the links uh, of yes. books uh, integrated books integrate i mean books uh, integrating sdgs subject wise you can have we will send you the links you can go through. right ma'am yeah next we have miss vaishali yes last would you like to yes. unmute miss vaishali sir i think can we go ahead because we can't hear anything from miss vaishali vaishali is trying to unmute uh, we don't yes shania madam is there shania ma'am you can ask yeah miss shania uh, good evening sir actually i um, angit sir was talking about collecting uh, waste paper i just wanted to know how to you know move forward with uh, with yeah, that yeah we will process. send you the information ma'am to your email all the information we will send you tanya ma'am uh, uh okay sir okay okay so got it abhun sir you. people are asking in the chat box how about the books uh, so you can uh, directly connect with them and let us yes we have uh, you know received the registrations and email through the email we will be passing all the information after this session no more questions i guess and, uh, so can, uh, can i can point out okay sure so that was indeed a wonderful session as you all must be aware that un general assembly approved this year 2022 as the international year of basic sciences for sustainable development and the opening ceremony will be held on 8th july 2022 at unesco headquarters in paris now why this basic sciences because it play major contribution to the implementation of sdgs all the sdgs 17 of them require the inputs of basic sciences to make it a success a little bit from my side yeah so i along with cbsc bharat sahodaya complex would like to express heartfelt gratitude to our experts mr anit gupta dr kalyani rao and ms abhilasha singh for throwing insights on how to connect sdgs in school curriculum 
as you all know, education is the most powerful transformative force. And I can vouch that all of us have got our golden nuggets for the day in transforming the world through UN SDGs. Next, I would like to thank the man behind the mission, Dr. Abdul Kalam, Abdul Salam, sir, for his constant support and guidance. Thank you, sir, for such a great opportunity to moderate the event, especially when I'm so passionate about Sustainable Development Goals projects. Also, a big shout out to the technical team behind the scene and behind the screen for the flawless execution of today's session. And most importantly, thank you, Atan, to all the participants for your enthusiasm on a Sunday afternoon. And I hope you have learned and earned your day. And I also hope that you have met, your passion has met your purpose as well. Also, let me take this opportunity to uh, send the gratitude note to my mentor, Dr. A.P. Jairaman, sir, who is a nuclear scientist at Baba Atomic Research Center. And he's a mentor at CIR. He must be uh, eagerly waiting for the recording of this session. And he's a scientist communicator, plus president STEAM Academy and chairman for National Center for Science Communicators. Also to the management and the leadership team of Harvest International School, Bangalore, for providing me with opportunities to participate inside as well as outside school programs. Change happen when we work together across borders and backgrounds. Let's be the change to see the change. Over to you, Salam, sir, for the closing note. Uh, thank you, Ms. Jaya, for the vibrant moderation and all the efforts you have made. And uh, hope this session was very fruitful to all the participants who have joined. Uh, thanks to Kalyani, ma'am, and it's uh, Gupta, sir, and uh, Ms. Aflasha and all those who have shared their experience and asked their doubts. A wonderful, you know, uh, what do you call effort they have been making. And uh, of course, this is uh, what do you call, we are not expecting in return in terms of, you know, uh, any monetary benefit or anything. We all have joined hands together uh, on this platform for a noble cause to make this planet a better place to live on. So uh, thank you so much uh, uh, from Bharat Sakhodi and BTAC. Uh, keep you know uh, inspiring, motivating your students. Uh, let us integrate uh, even SDGs in their uh, daily lives uh, to make it happen. Uh, and uh, definitely the uh, what do you call the help extended by ARC that is Mr. Anit uh, Gupta will be able to uh, guide us properly, and we will get, send you all the information through. Uh, your emails very shortly. So thank you so much uh, once again, all the uh, participants uh, and uh, Kalyani ma'am, Abhilasha ma'am, Anit Gupta sir, and uh, uh, lastly, I don't know. Thank you so much. Let's keep connected. Let's uh, meet uh, again later. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Wonderful, sir. Thank you so much. I really, really, really love this session and enjoyed it. Uh, many participants are asking for, you know, attendance link. I think the planet has already marked your attendance. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and attendance will also be marked by the actions that you take now. <laughs> yes, right, right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Bye. Okay, Avilash. Thank Thank Thanks you. a lot, Jaya. Thank Lovely you. moderation. Yes, me too. I became a fan of Jaya Man now. <laughs> Thank you so much.